<clears throat> uh, this is the first installment of the um, moment. This is the first installment of the micro lecture series, um, pulling from chapter four of Generations of Praise, the history of worship. Um, I want to cover three three different topics. Uh, the first being gains and losses. Uh, the second being effects, and the third being penance. Um, the early church uh, during the Byzantine Empire prospered theologically, aesthetically, culturally, and it did so in a pretty peaceful time. Uh, the Byzantine Empire was a was a good age for the church to grow and spread, and uh, it did it took advantage of that. Um, so going into the gains and losses of that time period, um, it's important to note that uh, that Constantine made uh, Christianity Christianity the main religion of the empire, and uh, while he did that, um, it freed up the church's ability to spread and evangelize, but it also opened the door to heresy and the infiltration of philosophy into into church doctrine, um, secular philosophy into church doc doctrine. Um, also, uh, while Christians were given the right to practice their religion publicly, as opposed to being underground, the spreading of Christianity throughout the empire created problems that the size of the church wasn't really equipped to handle at that time, specifically ecumenical, uh, linguistic, and cultural differences and strains. Uh, thirdly, the struggle for power among bishops is, epi is epitomized in the existence of uh, a higher seat uh, one that reflects a very political uh, nature, um, just in, in in how how it differentiates um, from in, from different church leaders, and I'm talking about the bishop of Rome uh, or the pope. Um, in my opinion, le leadership in the church should not be a power struggle, but should be an appointment uh, by God. Uh, going into the second category, uh, the effects. Uh, the effects that the political hierarchy had on the church essentially institutionalized the organic nature of the early church. Um, also, the relations were tense between the church and state. The process of ordination held true and resilient. So while the church and state had a very tense relationship, um, the, the authority figures in the church um, uh, at least the process of appointing and deciding on those authority figures was was very um, very strict, very very resilient against those political influences. And uh, the third and last category that I wanted to touch on uh, was just the category of penance uh, under sacrament, other sacraments. Um, something while I was reading it just baffled me. Um, this the severity of the penitential system, penitential system of the Byzantine kingdom or empire, whatever. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just baffling to me. And I was going to read a quote from page 151, um, talking about um, readmittance to the, to the church after penitence. Um, offenders needed to ask the church for admittance to the penitential system as proof of their remorse and willingness to amend their lives. But the process of amendment was, by modern standards, unbelievably severe. In most cases, penance required abstaining from meat, from public trading in the market, from marital relationship, not just during the time of penance, but until death, from remarriage in the case of the death of a spouse, and from any type of worldly gain. In short, the remainder of one's life, even after being readmitted to the communicating fellowship, was to be lived in asceticism, though without the honor of having done this of one's own volition, as did the monks. In fact, it was the monks who were most kindly disposed to helping nurture the penitents, and it was the monks, particularly those of Ireland, who eventually are, are credited with the re reforming the Byzantine penitential system. So, uh, that's that. Um, I think it's interesting to, to really see uh, how the Byzantine Empire uh, reflects a lot of specifically Roman, Roman Catholic tradition today. Um, and 
knowing knowing that knowing how Roman Catholicism has really shaped uh, church history and a lot of even Western history, even a lot of music history as well. Um, it, it's it's always interesting to see uh, how even that was formed, um, or was even beginning to be conceived in the in the minds of church fathers. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, chapter four, uh, the first installment. It's been real.